Good morning, good afternoon. And if there are colleagues and friends joining us uh, from places where it's in the evening, a uh, very good evening to you all. Excellencies, representatives of states parties to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, representatives of NHRIs and representatives of civil society organizations, dear participants, a very warm welcome once again to the fourth day of the 66th ordinary session of the African Commission on Human and People's Rights. Yesterday, during the course of the uh, third day of the session, as you all recall, we continued with agenda item three on the situation of human rights in Africa with a focus on human and people's rights in the context of COVID-19. And we received a number of statements from NHRIs, uh, from civil society organizations, statements that have provided us with a wide range of human and people's rights issues arising from COVID-19 and the COVID-19 response measures. We have heard from the statements on the socioeconomic impact of COVID-19, including in terms of the decline in the standard of living of uh, people in Rwanda, as a result of job loss by various groups of people in the private sector in the informal uh, and in the informal sector we have also heard about the loss of billions of dollars worth of the informal sector economy as a result of the COVID-19 response measures taken in South Africa. We have also noted uh, one of the recurring themes of many of the statements has been an indication that there has been lack of compliance on the part of states with the standards and principles of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights that are necessary to be observed in the course of the COVID-19 pandemic and the response measures as outlined in the statements of the African Commission of 28 February 2020 and 24 March uh, 2020, uh, including most uh, importantly, uh, the, very, the range of issues arising from non-compliance with the principle of equality and non-discrimination, lack of judicial supervision and review, non-compliance with the principles of necessity and proportionality, among others, uh, which have given rise to a wide range of issues. We have also heard about the misuse or abuse of COVID-19 response measures, uh, leading to the harassment of opposition uh, politicians, civil society organizations, human rights defenders, uh, and uh, stifling uh, free press and freedom of expression and access to information. Um, in the course of uh, our panel on agenda four, you also recall uh, the various issues uh, that have been highlighted uh, in terms of uh, the structural uh, dimensions uh, of the human rights issues uh, that COVID-19 uh, excavated uh, and brought to the fore uh, in terms of also uh, the, uh, the plethora of human rights issues arising from the management or lack of uh, proper management uh, system of the COVID-19 or the pandemic uh, emergencies. Um, and the uh, major uh, catastrophic socioeconomic consequences uh, of COVID-19 uh, and the serious and grave 
uh, human rights uh, concerns are riding from that. Uh, we have, as you recall, during the course of uh, that, um, the, during the course of that uh, panel, we have heard uh, interventions from uh, members of uh, the commission, uh, members of the commission, highlighting a number of important points, um, including, for example, the uh, issues that uh, the issues, um, let me quickly check this. The issues Commissioner Hatton raised, for example, uh, highlighting gaps in capacities of our, govern our governments and, and countries, and the need for more care and seriousness about the right to health. Uh, as part of obviously the right to life uh, and the point that Commissioner uh, Manuela raised in relation to uh, the need uh, for urgent attention to economic and social rights, uh, a point that have been raised by Commissioner King uh, earlier during the course of the panel uh, and importantly Commissioner Manuela uh, rightly pointed out, uh, weaponizing responses to, to the pandemic is not uh, permissible, but also is not the answer to the challenges arising from COVID-19 uh, response uh, measures. Um, these are some of uh, the examples. Uh, as you also recall, uh, Commissioner uh, Marie-Louise Abomo also uh, underscored the need for also collecting and putting together a compendium of best practices uh, from the experience of various countries. Um, informed by all of these, the one of the most important points that has come through from yesterday's interventions and statements was that there is a need for vigilance, for ensuring that the measures that have been introduced restricting and stifling the rights and freedoms in the African Charter need not be institutionalized and permanent, that they should come to an end as temporary measures. Today, we will continue with agenda item three. Uh, we will start with uh, states that uh, requested to take the floor. Um, I think it's important uh, to recall that uh, today's uh, session also reflects uh, the need for us to take account of uh, and discuss as part of this agenda item, uh, not only the socioeconomic impact of COVID-19, but also what COVID-19 means for the African Union theme of the year, silencing the guns in Africa. Uh, with that in mind, uh, I would like now to call on the first um, representative of state party uh, for Sahara Arab Democratic Republic. Uh, if the representative of Sahara Arab Democratic Republic is with us, uh, we will start uh, to receive the statement with you, sir. Do we have the representative of the Sahara Arab Democratic Republic? It looks like that we don't as yet have the representative of the Sahara Arab Democratic Republic. Uh, can I also indicate uh, who would be coming next? Uh, I have on the list uh, from state parties, the representative of the Republic of Malawi. And if we also have the Republic of Tanzania, uh, particularly the uh, Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs of Tanzania, uh, who requested to exercise a right of reply yesterday. If uh, Minister Nchemba is with us, uh, we would like to request for him to be on standby. Do we have the representative of the Republic of Malawi?
Okay. It appears that we have the representative of the Republic of Malawi. We don't. Okay, may I request uh, Mr. Pachora Kaira, Chief State Advocate, to take the floor. Kindly take the floor, um, put on the video as well as the mic on. Thank you. I hope now on. Yes, you are on. Very Thank good you. to see you. Thank again. you, sir. Thank and you. we congratulate the people of Malawi for Thank the you. successful uh, and democratic uh, conclusion of Thank the you. elections. Thank you. Sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson, commissioners, and all distinguished delegates. Uh, we are honored once again as Malawi to address you at this unique 66th ordinary session of the commission. And at the outset, we would like to congratulate the honorable commissioners who have recently joined the commission. We wish them well and pledge our support as they take on this noble task. They are joining the commission at a time when Africa and the rest of the world are facing unique challenges, and we are very hopeful that they will excel and will be there to support them. We would like to update the Commission on the recent political developments in Malawi. You will recall that at the 65th session of the Commission held in the Gambia in October 2019, we reported that Malawi held general elections in May 2019. The presidential election results were challenged in the court, and in February this year, results were nullified and fresh elections were ordered. The fresh presidential elections were finally held on the 23rd of June, and Dr. Lazarus Makathe Chakwela was elected as the sixth president of the Republic of Malawi. We are grateful and very proud that once again, we have experienced a, a peaceful transition in Malawi. And uh, we are very thankful to the many messages of support that we have received from uh, fellow African countries, as well as the rest of the world. In February this year, we submitted our periodic report covering the period 2015 to 2019. And the report is in line with the commission's guidelines. That is, part A covers the charter and part B covers the Maputo protocol. We are looking forward to being reviewed by the commission at the 67th ordinary session of the commission. Now, Malawi, like the rest of the world, has not been spared from the COVID pandemic, and we just want to highlight a few measures which Malawi has taken to deal with the pandemic. Firstly, there was a declaration of state of disaster in March 2020. Secondly, a, there was development of a national response plan. And thirdly, there was an establishment of a presidential task force on COVID-19. And uh, this task force has actually been reconstituted just yesterday by the president. And uh, that has been followed up with the establishment of um, a COVID response office in the office of the president and cabinet. And then we have also released at least 3,522 prisoners, essentially to reduce congestion in our prisons. Malawi had about 2,614 2, cases, uh, COVID cases, with about 43 deaths and 1,005 recoveries. In total, as of yesterday, we had conducted about 21,953 tests. The fight against this pandemic is ongoing and requires vigilance and collaborative efforts, not only domestically, but also at international level. The measures being taken to prevent the further spreading of this virus have to be mindful of the rights and freedoms that the people of Africa have. And there's no doubt that this pandemic has affected our social and economic status of the people. We are determined therefore, working not only as Malawi, but working with the rest of the continent to ensure that we overcome this. And at the same time, 
our people continue to enjoy their rights and freedoms. The dreams of our forefathers and our foremothers. It was the dreams which were well articulated by the Nkrumahs and the Mandelas that not only should Africa be free, but we should also be economically prosperous. The route to Agenda 2063 is through the observance of human rights, the rule of law and democracy. Malawi cherishes these ideals and will do her part to ensure that we realize these ideals. And in conclusion, Chairperson, Commissioners, State Delegates and all distinguished participants, we wish all of us a fruitful uh, deliberations and we hope that we will soon meet in Banjo the Gambia uh, for the 67th session in a COVID free environment. Thank you so much for listening and God bless all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kaira, uh, for the statement uh, of the Republic of Malawi. Uh, we join you in celebrating with the people of Malawi uh, the successful democratic elections and peaceful transfer of power. Um, and we uh, commend uh, the effort and work of the Malawi judiciary uh, and civil society organizations uh, for um, enabling uh, the emergence of this condition. Uh, we also uh, take note of the efforts uh, that are being deployed by Malawi for addressing the threat posed by COVID-19 by way of uh, putting, uh, declaring a state of disaster, uh, putting in place um, a task force uh, and also a COVID response office uh, at the highest office in the country. Um, most notably, we commend and welcome uh, the, re the release of over 3,000 uh, prisoners uh, as part of the effort to decongest uh, prison uh, and places of detention uh, that can be vulnerable for the spread of COVID-19. Uh, we indeed agree with you that uh, Africa needs not only to be free uh, from uh, colonial rule, and foreign domination, but also it is imperative that it is it becomes economically prosperous for achieving the ideals enshrined in the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. We also look forward to the convening of the African Commission's session in person uh, in a COVID-free environment. We do hope that that wouldn't be in a not too distant future. Thank you once again. May I request if the Sahara Arab Democratic Republic representative is here with us? We don't have yet uh, any indication of that. Okay. Uh, is the Honorable Dr. Nchemba, Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs with us? We don't have any indication to that effect as well. Uh, I would therefore proceed to request uh, the national human rights uh, institutions that requested to take the floor. Uh, as of this moment, we have two uh, national human rights institutions. The first is National Human Rights Institution of Algeria. And the next is the National uh, Human Rights uh, Commission of uh, Cameroon. Uh, so I request. <laughs> May I kindly request that the National Human Rights Institution of Algeria, uh, the representative, to take the floor. We oui. please. Um, you are you are very welcome to the 66 ordinary session of the commission. Kindly put on the mic as well as the video on.
I'm not sure if Mr. Abdullahab Merjan, Merjana, are you still there? Bonjour, vous m'entendez? Uh, kindly put on the video and, and, and start uh, making the statement. Vous, vous, vous m'entendez? Vous me voyez? C'est bon? C'est bon. Ah, très bien. Merci, euh, Monsieur le Président, euh, de me permettre de présenter la déclaration, la déclaration de l'INDH algérienne devant cette euh, 66e euh, session de la Commission africaine des droits de l'homme et des peuples. Comme je me réjouis également que l'INDH algérienne figure parmi les rares INDH à être à jour dans la présentation des rapports devant cette auguste commission. Avant de commencer donc ma présentation, je tiens particulièrement à souhaiter la bienvenue aux honorables membres nouvellement élus. Permettez-moi également de rendre hommage aux blouses blanches à travers le monde et en Afrique qui se trouvent sur le front en train de lutter contre cette grave pandémie de la COVID-19. Excuse me, can we have the English translation, please? Oui, pardon? I'm asking the, the interpreters to translate, to make the English translation. I'm asking our interpreters. Ah, d'accord. Okay, okay. Please proceed. Okay, je commence, je, je recommence. Uh, je recommence ou... Je reprends, je... Donc, d'accord. Merci, Monsieur le Président, de me permettre de présenter euh, la déclaration de l'INDH algérienne devant cette 66e session de la Commission africaine des droits de l'homme et des peuples. Comme je me réjouis également que notre INDH, l'INDH algérienne, figure parmi les rares INDH à, à être à jour dans la présentation des rapports devant cette auguste commission. Euh, avant de commencer ma présentation, je tiens particulièrement à souhaiter la bienvenue aux honorables membres nouvellement élus. Permettez-moi également de rendre à travers vous un, un, un hommage aux blouses blanches à travers le monde et en Afrique qui se trouvent sur le front en train de lutter contre cette grave pandémie de la COVID-19. En outre, je vous informe du changement intervenu dans la présidence de l'INDH algérienne. Monsieur le professeur Zahari Bouzid a été élu par ses pairs en novembre 2019 en qualité de président en remplacement de l'ex-présidente Madame Papa Bazaroki, qui a présenté sa démission pour des raisons personnelles à l'Assemblée générale du Conseil national des droits de l'homme d'Algérie. Monsieur le professeur Bouzid Zahari préside également actuellement le Conseil consultatif du Conseil des droits de l'homme des Nations unies à Genève. Monsieur le président, mesdames et messieurs les membres de la Commission africaine des droits de l'homme et des peuples, distingués délégués. Le Conseil national des droits de l'homme d'Algérie a effectué et effectue, à l'instar des autres institutions nationales africaines des droits de l'homme, diverses activités de sensibilisation sur la pandémie du COVID-19, ainsi qu'un suivi et une, une évaluation de l'impact de cette pandémie sur la jouissance des droits de l'homme et des libertés fondamentales. S'inspirant des instruments internationaux et régionaux en matière de promotion et de protection des droits de l'homme, notamment la Charte africaine des droits de l'homme et des peuples, et ses articles 4 et 9, relatifs respectivement au droit à la vie et au droit à la santé, le Conseil national exerce pleinement avec une ferme détermination. Uh, sincere, apologies, sincere apologies, sir. Uh, can you hold on for a minute, please? We are having difficulties with the interpretation. D'accord, d'accord, ok. Please hold on, hold on for, for, for a few minutes, please. Ok, ok.
apologies for this technical uh, uh, issue that we have with interpretation, uh, but I kindly uh, ask for your indulgence um, uh, to wait for a bit. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, pass see. Okay, uh, looks like, yes, I can hear you now. Okay, looks like that we have interpreted. Uh, yeah, may, maybe okay, there is a connection problem somewhere, but okay. it looks like that we have, okay. Uh, je, je continue yes, la, I can hear you. Thank terminé, you very ou... much. Yes, please. Monsieur le Président, Mesdames et Messieurs les membres de la Commission africaine des droits de l'homme et des peuples distingués et délégués, le Conseil national des droits de l'homme d'Algérie a effectué et effectue, à l'instar des autres institutions nationales africaines des droits de l'homme, diverses activités de sensibilisation sur la pandémie de la COVID-19, ainsi qu'un suivi et une évaluation de l'impact de cette pandémie sur la jouissance des droits de l'homme et des libertés fondamentales. S'inspirant des instruments internationaux, régionaux. Euh, Excuse me, we have two English interpret interpretations. Can we have only one? Please proceed, sir. Apologies about this. Please proceed, sir. Okay. Monsieur le Président, Mesdames et Messieurs les membres de la Commission africaine des droits de l'homme et des peuples, distingués délégués. Le Conseil national des droits de l'homme d'Algérie a effectué et effectue, à l'instar des autres institutions nationales des droits de l'homme euh, africaines, diverses activités de sensibilisation sur la pandémie de la COVID-19, ainsi qu'un suivi et une évaluation de l'impact de cette pandémie sur la jouissance des droits de l'homme et des libertés fondamentales. S'inspirant des instruments internationaux et régionaux en matière de promotion et de protection des droits de l'homme, notamment la Charte africaine des droits de l'homme et des peuples, et, sa, et ses articles 4 et 9, relatifs relatif respectivement aux droits et à la vie, aux droits à la vie et aux droits à la santé, le Conseil national exerce pleinement et avec une ferme détermination les missions qui lui sont confiées par la Constitution et les dispositions des articles 4, 5, 6, 6, 7 de la loi numéro 16, 13 et 3 novembre 2016. Ces missions entrent dans le cadre général des principes reconnus par la communauté internationale et qui régissent les institutions nationales des droits de l'homme. Euh, appelés communément les, les principes de Paris. La diversité des thèmes et les nombreuses questions traitées par le Conseil national témoignent de son engagement ferme et efficace à s'acquitter pleinement de son mandat, tant dans le domaine de la protection que de la promotion des droits de l'homme. Le nombre important de sujets liés aux droits de l'homme et aux libertés fondamentales qui ont émergé fortement sur la scène nationale et leur diversité représentent des défis différents qui permettront au Conseil national de pouvoir évaluer la volonté des pouvoirs publics de traduire sur le terrain les obligations et les exigences internationales et régionales y afférentes. Depuis 13 mars 2020, en raison des restrictions liées à la crise sanitaire causée par la pandémie de la COVID-19, le Conseil national a organisé ses activités par vidéoconférence afin de maintenir une consultation régulière et constante avec les membres du bureau permanent et les acteurs institutionnels et non institutionnels. Monsieur le Président, Mesdames et Messieurs les membres de la Commission, distingués et délégués, le Conseil national a également assuré des interactions par courriel avec le Haut Commissariat des Nations Unies aux droits de l'homme, avec le CANRI, l'Alliance mondiale des institutions sans droits de l'homme, le réseau africain, le réseau arabe, ainsi que les titulaires de mandat au titre des procédures spéciales. Soulignons les dimensions des droits de l'homme en pleine crise sanitaire mondiale, le Conseil national a adopté une approche pragmatique en mettant en œuvre plusieurs actions sur le terrain et à travers les réseaux, les réseaux sociaux. Le Conseil national qui accorde un intérêt particulier et soutenu aux personnes vulnérables a effectué des visites à des, à des établissements pénitentiaires, des locaux de la garde à vue, de la police judiciaire et des centres d'accueil pour personnes âgées et pour enfants. Comme il s'est préoccupé également des conditions de vie, de santé et de séjour des migrants et des réfugiés. En outre, le Conseil national a renforcé ses liens de communication et d'information avec les organisations de la société civile, 
ainsi qu'avec ses délégations régionales et ses correspondants locaux répartis sur l'ensemble du territoire national à l'effet de détecter toute atteinte aux violations des droits de l'homme et de s'assurer du niveau de respect au cours de cette grave pandémie. En matière de communication sociale, le Conseil national s'est exprimé au niveau national, publiquement et à maintes fois, sur différents sujets d'actualité liés au respect des droits de l'homme dans le cadre de la lutte contre la pandémie de la COVID-19. Monsieur le Président, Mesdames et Messieurs les membres de la Commission distingués délégués, en matière d'interaction avec le système international et régional des droits de l'homme, le Conseil national a aussi participé à des conférences par vidéoconférence sur la lutte contre la COVID-19 et ses conséquences sur les droits de l'homme. On peut, on peut citer à titre d'exemple euh, le 30 avril 2020 avec l'ONG Ensemble contre la peine de mort en partenariat avec l'Association française des commissions nationales des droits de l'homme sur le guide des institutions nationales des droits de l'homme et l'abolition de la peine de mort. Avec le réseau africain des institutions nationales des droits de l'homme le 10 juin 2020 sur le recours excessif à la force par les personnes chargées d'appliquer la loi concernant les mesures de lutte contre la pandémie de la COVID-19. Avec le réseau arabe des institutions nationales des droits de l'homme, le 14 mai 2020, sur la surveillance des, des, des lieux de privation et du principe non préjudice en termes de la pratique. Elle a participé également à une session, à une autre formation du 23 au 25 juin 2020 sur l'objectif 16 dans le cadre du suivi des indicateurs et des objectifs de développement durable, le 15 juillet, c'est-à-dire hier, sur la question de la Palestine. Elle a également participé avec le Bureau régional pour le Moyen-Orient et l'Afrique du Nord du Haut-Commissariat basé à Beyrouth, au Liban, le 28 mai 2020, sur les effets de la COVID-19 sur les victimes de la traite des êtres humains. Telles sont, M. le Président, les principales activités que le Conseil national des droits de l'homme d'Algérie a menées et continue de mener dans le cadre de la lutte contre la COVID-19, dans le strict, strict respect des droits de l'homme et des libertés fondamentales, conformément, conformément aux principes directeurs édictés par la Charte africaine des droits de l'homme et des peuples. Merci de votre aimable attention. Thank you very much uh, for your statement, um, providing us with uh, updates on the activities undertaken by uh, the National Human Rights Commission of Algeria, uh, particularly in the context of COVID-19, uh, the advocacy work uh, that have been carried out by your commission, uh, particularly uh, within the framework of and on the basis of Article 4 and Article 16 of the African Charter relating to the right to life and the right to health. Uh, also the issues, uh, the statements that you have made in the context of COVID-19 at the national level, uh, as well as the efforts towards uh, the protection of highlighting the protection, the need for protection of the most vulnerable uh, people in prison conditions, uh, people uh, in isolation centers, the elderly and migrants. Uh, we very much appreciate your statement. Uh, thank you once again for joining us. The next is the uh, National Commission uh, for Human Rights uh, and Liberties uh, of Cameroon. Do we have the representative of the National Commission for Human Rights and Liberties of Cameroon? At well. Okay. Um, I would like to request that the representative of uh, the National Human Rights uh, Commission of Human Rights and Liberties of Cameroon take the floor. Um, kindly put on uh, your mic and the video. Do we have Yolanda Elisa? Oui, oui, oui. Yolanda Elisa est bien là. Kindly take the floor.
bien nommé du coup, chef de division de promotion et de protection des droits de l'homme, euh, désigné par le président de la Commission nationale des droits de l'homme et des verdicts du Cameroun pour présenter la déclaration. Honorable commissaire, distingué représentant des institutions nationales. Merci bien. Chers membres des organisations de la société civile, chers participants, la Commission nationale des droits de l'homme et des libertés du Cameroun profite de l'espace qui lui est offert à cette tribune pour rendre hommage à son président décédé le 18 mai 2020 et dont les obsèques se déroulent en ce moment du 16 au 18 juillet 2020. Pendant l'exercice de son mandat et en sa qualité de président, de vice-président, puis de président du réseau des institutions nationales africaines de droits de l'homme, il a contribué à faire entendre la voix de la CNDHL et des INDH africaines lors des sessions de la Commission africaine des droits de l'homme et des peuples. Nous saluons ici la mémoire d'un défenseur des droits de l'homme et des valeurs particulières qui l'inspirent tant au okay. niveau national um, qu'africain. Relativement à la situation so can générale you speak a bit louder Cameroun, and clearer? malgré les Close efforts to the mic, consenti... Thank you. I hope I'll be heard. Interpreters couldn't, couldn't get your, your voice. Okay, thank you. Please proceed. Thank you. No, nous saluons de uh, la mémoire d'un uh, défenseur perhaps... des droits de l'homme et des valeurs particulières qu'il a au uh, niveau africain. That you, you, you log in again. We couldn't, we couldn't really hear you. It looks like that we have there is a problem, a connection problem. Malgré les efforts, kindly log out and then reconnect again. We couldn't, we couldn't really get anything from your side and interpreters are unable to, to get anything from your side as well. Okay, let's, in the meantime, uh, take other statements from civil society organizations. Do we have the representative of independent medical legal unit, IMLU? Do we have Mr. Kevin Mwangi? Okay, uh, do we have uh, AIDS and Rights Alliance for Southern Africa? AIDS and Rights Alliance for Southern Africa. Yesterday, we have been trying to connect with um, Mr. Innocent Bissimwa. Do we have Mr. Innocent Bissimwa? Okay. Do we have East and Horn of Africa Human Rights Defenders Project? I, I get an indication that we have the representative of East and Horn of Africa Human Rights Defenders Project, uh, Mr. Walda Keza. This is uh, the organization 
question with observer status number 359. Mr. Walla Keza, you have the floor, please. Thank you, Chairperson. It's Ms. Walda Keza. My apologies, Madam. Uh, thank you. Honorable Chairperson. Your mic is Honorable... not on. Kindly put the mic on. Thank you. Can you hear me? Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Commissioners, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I present a statement on behalf of Defend Defenders and African Defenders. Allow me first of all to congratulate the newly elected Honorable Commissioners who have joined this August House. The COVID-19 COVID pandemic has exposed existing inequalities in our societies. Measures put in place by states to curb the spread of the virus have greatly affected the work, safety, and livelihoods of human rights defenders on the African continent. During this period, authorities have either committed violations while fighting the pandemic or use the latter as an excuse to violate rights, including by targeting peaceful critics and independent voices. While public health measures are necessary to tackle the global pandemic, we believe that rights and the rule of law should be respected. The restrictive measures adopted by several state parties in response to COVID-19 violated the principle of states of emergency under international law, as well as principles restrictions to rights should follow in particular, non-discrimination and proportionality. We have documented cases of abuse of power where excessive and lethal force was used by police to enforce confinement measures and target certain groups, including crackdowns on independent voices under the guise of fighting COVID-19 or fake news. A human rights-based approach in responding to COVID-19 was not considered in most of the state parties. Human rights organizations were not listed as essential services, which has affected access to justice. This has resulted in intimidation and reprisals, as well as stress, trauma, and depression, especially for those who witnessed death and injury in related to the virus or state actions, or those who suffered torture, arrest, incommunado detention, or threats in relation to their views on the management of the crisis in their countries. Honorable Chairperson, human rights defenders and whistleblowers played an undeniable role during the pandemic, especially in advocating for just and legal measures to combat the virus. For example, raising awareness of human rights issues associated with lockdown measures, such as the lack of government accountability and transparency to fight the pandemic, lack of access to public interest information, including the performance of government in their response to the public health crisis and the connected economic crisis, as well as corruption and increased prevalence of sexual and gender-based gender violence, in particular domestic violence and violence against children. The pandemic has revealed more than ever the importance of freedom of expression and access to information. Human rights defenders should be seen as allies rather than threats in a human rights centered society. Honorable Chairperson, over the last six months, governments in the subregion have continued to restrict legitimate expression of civilian dissent, including peaceful demonstrations and gatherings, free expression of human rights defenders, media professionals, and citizens, as well as targeted civil society organizations through various strategies of harassment and repression. Positive trends and developments have been noted in Sudan. And in January 2020, Sudan took a seat on the UN Human Rights Council, and it is hoped that its membership term will be leveraged for domestic progress. The award of the Nobel Peace Prize to Prime Minister Abi Ahmed, the formation of a national coalition of HRDs, and the fact that Ethiopia now leads the sub-region in media freedom should also be noted. However, Ethiopia faces uncertainty ahead of its elections with rising ethnic political tensions over land and livelihoods, and the recent violence in the aftermath of the killing of popular Oromo, of popular Oromo musician Hachalu Hundesa, which has left at least 239 people dead and millions remain internally displaced. Burundi's election was marked by a climate of repression fear, intimidation, intimidation, and widespread impunity. The election of the new president, General Evaris Ndaishimie, has not brought hope for social change and for addressing the gross and systemic human rights violations in the country. State agents, ruling party officials, and members of the Imbonera Kure militia continue to perpetrate grave violations against civilians. The appointment of a new government, several members of which may be responsible for grave violation, raises concern. Tanzania continues to aggressively crack down on civic space, HRDs, and independent journalists. 
Ahead of the October 2020 presidential elections, members and supporters of the opposition and those peacefully expressing dissent or criticism of the government risk being criminalized or attacked, including via trumped up economic crimes charges or legislation pertaining to freedom of expression or association online and offline. The recent arrests of opposition politicians, revocation of license of a leading newspaper, and disruption of civil society events marks a continuation of the negative trend observed since 2015. Restrictions on opposition politicians have also increased in Uganda, which is heading towards its scheduled 2021 elections. Ugandan citizens' rights to freedom of opinion and expression, peaceful assembly, and have been increasingly under pressure. The COVID-19 lockdown with a curfew in place and heavy restrictions on movement have been accompanied by reports of police and army brutality against civilians. However, Uganda's vibrant civil society has also registered achievements during the reporting period. Djibouti and Eritrea continue to be ruled by two of the most repressive governments in the sub-region, both ranking amongst the world's worst five abusers of press freedom. Madam Shaka, uh, I think you are taking too long a time. Kindly wrap okay. up. Okay, in conclusion, as I'll, I'll wrap up with Djibouti, while in Djibouti, HRDs work in a very restrictive environment, the context makes it impossible for independent human rights actors and organizations to operate in Eritrea. It should be noted, however, that demonstrations took place in Djibouti in June 2020, following the extradition from Ethiopia and detention of a former army officer. This remains a rare occurrence, but signals Djibouti and citizens' desire for change and justice. In conclusion, Honorable Chairperson, we call on member states to adhere to the commitments to protect, yeah, respect, and fulfill the fundamental human rights and freedoms guaranteed by the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. Thank you. Thank you for uh, your statement, uh, highlighting uh, the various uh, human rights issues uh, emerging in the context of COVID-19, uh, including those resulting from abuse of COVID-19 regulation measures. Um, the issues highlighted, uh, again, uh, it is uh, an issue that have been by other by others as well. This relates to the fact that uh, human rights defenders and their work have not been classified as essential service, uh, affecting the provision of uh, services to those uh, whose rights have been affected during the pandemic. Issues relating to lack of accountability, uh, and also importantly, I think, uh, in the context of COVID, uh, countries uh, with uh, scheduled elections uh, and issues that have arisen in the context of uh, the convening of elections, um, whether it is in relation to Ethiopia or in relation to Burundi, uh, and the upcoming elections in Tanzania uh, and Uganda, as well as uh, the issues uh, of uh, civic space in Djibouti. Thank you for your statement. Uh, we do have uh, with us, uh, I understand, uh, the CEO of the uh, National Human Rights Commission of Kenya, uh, Dr. Mogesa, uh, with us. Um, I would request that Dr. Mogesa takes the floor. Uh, and then if uh, Yolanda uh, Elisa, uh, is ready after Dr. Mugesa. We will uh, give the floor to Yolanda Elisa. So we don't have Dr. Mugesa. No, we don't have. Uh, how about Yolanda Elisa? Yolanda? Hello? Okay, uh, we can hear you. Hello. Is that Dr. Mogesa? Yes, yeah, speaking. Okay, uh, uh, kindly take the floor and make your statement, Dr. Mogesa. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate this opportunity that um, you have extended to us uh, to share our experiences on uh, the COVID-19. Allow me then to say that uh, we have already issued our first report uh, covering the period uh, 15th March to 30th June. And uh, this is now uh, a, a public uh, document. Now in this report, we have key areas of intervention 
we looked at the complaints and investigations where we have recorded 222 uh, complaints. Then uh, the other key intervention has been litigation and uh, we are, are in court for three uh, petitions. Then we have issued nine advisories to various government agencies. We have also uh, engaged the media and uh, done seven uh, press statements. And then our monitoring report, uh, which is um, itemized under seven thematic areas, uh, which are the right to life, where again, we have recorded and pursuing uh, 10 deaths that have been caused by the police. And uh, we are also following up on 87 uh, cases of torture. Then the second thematic area is access to justice. And uh, we are glad that um, the judiciary introduced the E uh, system for handling. But allow me to say that uh, uh, the Kenya Prison Service uh, released 4,800 petty offenders as a way of decongesting the uh, prisons uh, in the country. Then the other thematic area uh, is media and access to information. And uh, we have recorded complaints of uh, media harassment, and this is captured in our report. Then on education, we have also uh, realized that private schools are offering online learning, but only 10% of public schools are able to provide this particular service. And we did an advisory to the Ministry of Education uh, to consider uh, uh, beefing up online uh, services to uh, public schools. Then uh, the other thematic area is the labor and the social security where we have witnessed cash transfers for the elderly and persons living in informal settlements. However, again, we have received complaints where these cash transfers are not reaching uh, the intended uh, beneficiaries and we have written uh, to the uh, ministry concern. Then uh, uh, thematic area number six is on housing and we have pronounced ourselves very clearly on the evictions that were conducted during this period as we are also fighting the COVID-19. And we have advised the government of Kenya to restrain itself from conducting any further evictions until uh, we battle the COVID-19. Then on water and sanitation, the cost of water has gone up in the informal settlements by almost 500%. Uh, and we have made advisories to the government on the same, and also uh, encouraged the, uh, those who disconnect the water not to do so during this COVID-19. And finally, the eighth thematic area is on health facilities. And we have realized that uh, people are avoiding going to hospital for fear of being tested positive for COVID-19 and the related costs they are likely to incur. So in this one, it is preventing people from seeking medication. We are also worried that uh, pregnant mothers are giving birth in their homes, which may also compromise on their health. And uh, other areas like uh, child health, uh, chronic diseases, services have been inter uh, interrupted because of the COVID-19. So as I move to conclusion, Allow me to say that uh, having mentioned those uh, uh, you know, various uh, rights, the civil and the political rights constitute 49.5% of the complaints that we have received. And economic social cultural rights, we have 32% and the group or communal rights constitute 18.5% of the complaints uh, that we have uh, received. Then uh, something uh, which is quite interesting for us also to note is that uh, majority of the complaints were against the state agencies, uh, which is 91 cases. And this uh, therefore interprets to mean 
that 59% uh, of that was perpetuated by the Kenya police. And then the other areas or persons involved, of course, include the local administration uh, who have also been recorded as uh, perpetrators of uh, uh, people's rights. So in a nutshell then, um, the way the commission organized itself was out of you know forming a committee. I did form a committee, a COVID-19 technical committee, uh, which then has helped us to monitor the ongoings uh, in the country. As you are aware, people are working from home, but we have been able to sustain uh, the momentum in terms of uh, handling complaints and occasionally going to the ground to see what is happening. So in a nutshell, those are the, the report that we have already released. And now we are engaging government or with various you know, recommendations uh, for them to take up and ensure that we promote and protect human rights in the Republic of Kenya. So that is exactly what has happened. And I'm glad that those who may be interested to read further, this report is now on our website uh, with the details, uh, which then uh, the panelists and all the other participants can read for themselves. And in conclusion, the commission is engaging the national government and the county governments in the Republic of Kenya to ensure that as we fight COVID-19, we are also privy to the need uh, to ensure that uh, rights of people are protected as well. Uh, that is what I need to say for now. And thank you very much for affording this statement before the African Commission on Human and People's Rights. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mogesa, uh, for that very uh, detailed and comprehensive statement. Uh, on the work of the uh, National Commission of Human Rights of Kenya, uh, which is, uh, uh, and, and I would like to commend the work that has been accomplished by your commission, um, Thank you very much. and also uh, for your engagement um, with the country reporter of, the, of, of Kenya, uh, when we convened a consultation uh, on the situation of human rights in Kenya. Uh, which we are still following up. And this statement that you have provided us uh, would complement uh, what we have been doing uh, previously. I think from uh, what you have outlined, uh, there are quite uh, a large number of issues, uh, but, so, but also uh, some best practices in terms of the role and engagement of national human rights institutions uh, in uh, responding to and addressing issues of uh, human rights arriving in the context of COVID-19. Uh, and also the, the systematic and disaggregated data that you have provided on in terms of the number of uh, complaints and cases that we have received uh, covering civil and political rights, 49.9%, uh, socioeconomic rights, 42%, uh, collective rights of peoples or community rights, constituting 18 0.5% of the complaints that you have uh, received uh, and clearly indicating that the issues, the human rights issues arriving in the context of COVID cover all categories of rights. There is no right, there is no category of right that is uh, spared uh, from being affected by COVID-19. You have highlighted important uh, emerging issues uh, such as uh, the potential exclusion of uh, school-going kids from access to education uh, because only 10% of public schools are able to provide uh, online education during this uh, pandemic. The release of uh, 4,800 um, uh, petty offenders to decongest prisons and uh, places of detention, uh, we very much welcome that initiative by the government of uh, Kenya. Uh, we also uh, wish to acknowledge um, the initiative to provide uh, cash transfer, uh, despite the uh, challenge that have been observed. Of course, we express concern about excessive use of force uh, that we have made reference to, uh, including the 10 days and the 87 cases of torture. 
uh, with uh, some 59% of uh, the cases complained were against uh, the Kenyan police, uh, highlighting uh, issue of uh, governance of the Kenyan police. We also take note of uh, the point around the role of the judiciary, particularly in terms of the judiciary uh, continuing to provide access to remedies uh, and uh, continuing to uh, deliver on its responsibilities, which is also uh, a very important and commendable uh, uh, act. We very much we, we thank you once again uh, for this very detailed and comprehensive statement, and also uh, for the various actions that your commissions have undertaken in the course of uh, this pandemic and the report that you have released. Uh, we at the African Commission would like to urge you to continue to make use of the statements issued by the African Commission, uh, which continue to be relevant for purpose of uh, enhancing uh, the monitoring role of national human rights institutions. Thank you once again. May I request now uh, Yolande El Elisa. Do we have Yolande Elisa? Okay. Uh, this is uh, the National uh, Commission of Human Rights and Liberties of Cameroon. Uh, kindly take the floor, please. Honorable Commissaire, est-ce que vous nous entendez? We, we we still don't see you. Can you can you put the video on? Okay. Tout de suite là, Monsieur le Président. Que l'animateur active la vidéo, s'il vous plaît. Que l'animateur active la vidéo, s'il vous plaît. We we can't see you. Uh, we, we see some, some picture, but we don't see you. Yes, now we can see you. Kindly proceed. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Commissaire, distingué représentant des institutions nationales des droits de l'homme, chers membres des organisations de la société civile, chers participants, La Commission nationale des droits de l'homme et des libertés du Cameroun profite de l'espace qui lui est offert à cette tribune pour rendre hommage à son président décédé le 18 mai 2020 et dont les obsèques se déroulent du 16 au 18 juillet 2020. Pendant l'exercice de son mandat et en sa qualité de vice-président puis du président du réseau des institutions nationales des droits de l'homme Africaine, il a contribué à faire entendre la voix de la Commission nationale des droits de l'homme du Cameroun et du RINAD à diverses sessions de la Charte africaine, de la Commission africaine des droits de l'homme et des peuples. Nous saluons ici la mémoire d'un défenseur des droits de l'homme et des valeurs particulières qui l'inspire au niveau africain. Relativement à la situation générale des droits de l'homme au Cameroun, Malgré les efforts consentis par le gouvernement pour s'assurer du respect des droits de l'homme par tous et chacun, la situation demeure préoccupante. En effet, si l'on enregistre quelques avancées remarquables en matière de droits de l'homme, notamment avec l'adoption le 19 juillet 2019 de la loi portant création de la Commission nationale, de la Commission des droits de l'homme du Cameroun, qui abroge toutes les dispositions antérieures relatives à cette institution nationale, la tenue du 30 septembre au 4 octobre du grand dialogue national et ses premières retombées qui sont déjà enregistrées, la conduite d'enquête assortie de résultats sur des cas préoccupants de violation des droits de l'homme au Cameroun. Malgré ces avancées, disais-je, il n'en demeure pas moins que l'environnement est toujours autant marqué par des troubles sécuritaires, 
et sociopolitique dans certaines régions du pays. La persistance de la situation dans les régions du nord-ouest et du sud-ouest, la résurgence des attaques terroristes dans l'extrême nord du Cameroun avec les Boko Haram, les mouvements de contestation de l'ordre républicain initiés au lendemain des joutes électorales et la montée des discours de haine sont autant d'occurrences de mise en doute, mise en vue des preuves des droits de l'homme au Cameroun. Au-delà des nombreuses pertes en vie humaine et des dégâts matériels qu'ils engendrent et du ralentissement significatif des activités socio-économiques dans le nord-ouest et le sud-ouest, ces troubles ont provoqué une réduction des ressources de l'État et imposent une réorientation des priorités des politiques publiques vers des considérations sécuritaires et par conséquent un délaissement de certaines préoccupations sociales et des droits de l'homme au regard de la part du budget alloué à ces divers secteurs. À l'évidence, la situation socio-sécuritaire du pays compromet la jouissance, la pleine jouissance des droits économiques, socio-culturels, ainsi que la multiplication des cas de violation tant verticale qu'horizontale des droits civils et politiques. La Commission nationale des droits de l'homme du Cameroun suggère aux membres de la Commission africaine des droits de l'homme et des peuples de rappeler à toutes les parties prenantes les avantages du respect des droits humains consacrés par la Charte et de redoubler d'efforts pour assainir la situation. Elle encourage à l'État à prendre des mesures idoines pour la préservation de la paix et de la sécurité du pays dans le strict respect des droits de l'homme, notamment à travers l'accélération de la mise en œuvre des recommandations pertinentes du grand dialogue nord, euh, national, le parachèvement de la réforme engagée de l'INDH du Cameroun et son opérationnalisation en tant que mécanisme national de prévention de la torture. En cela, la Commission nationale des droits de l'homme du Cameroun sait pouvoir compter sur l'accompagnement de la Commission africaine des droits de l'homme et de ses partenaires. Relativement à la situation des droits de l'homme en période de lutte contre la COVID-19 au Cameroun, la Commission nationale des droits de l'homme et des libertés rappelle que malgré le contexte présenté plus haut, l'État a pris avec assez tôt les mesures pour réduire la propagation de la pandémie, notamment en procédant rapidement à la fermeture des frontières et en adoptant les mesures barrières et hygiéniques édictées tant par le gouvernement que par l'Organisation mondiale de la santé. Pour accompagner l'État dans sa démarche, la Commission nationale des droits de l'homme et des libertés du Cameroun a saisi diverses administrations publiques afin de les inviter à adopter une approche basée sur les droits de l'homme dans toutes les actions entreprises dans le cadre de la riposte engagée contre le nouveau coronavirus. Il s'agit notamment des propositions d'action visant à garantir à tous et à chacun le droit à l'information et plus spécifiquement aux personnes handicapées visuelles et auditives à éviter l'accentuation des vulnérabilités face à cette pandémie chez les personnes vulnérables, les personnes âgées, les personnes handicapées, les enfants de la rue, les populations autochtones, à adopter des mesures spécifiques de protection civile pour préserver les droits à la vie et à la santé des personnes déplacées internes, à protéger le droit à la santé des personnels de santé et à éviter la, leur démobilisation, à saluer la propagation, la propagation de la période, la prorogation de la période d'activité des personnels de santé décidée par le chef de l'État, à élargir l'accessibilité du réseau public d'adduction d'eau en zone rurale et urbaine afin de préserver le droit à l'eau à un environnement sain et le droit à la santé des populations, à éviter la déperdition scolaire du fait de l'arrêt des cours et partant 
de garantir le droit à l'éducation des enfants, à protéger les milieux carcéraux de la propagation de la pandémie tout en respectant le droit à des procédures, à des procédures équitables, à limiter la spéculation sur les prix des produits de première nécessité pour assurer le droit à l'alimentation des populations pendant cette période délicate. Le gouvernement a pris les mesures pour préserver la santé des populations malgré que les impacts sur le droit et les libertés continuent à être dénombrés. Dans un contexte général où 65,87% des violations des droits de l'homme sont d'origine privée au Cameroun, la Commission nationale des droits de l'homme et des libertés invite la Commission africaine des droits de l'homme et des peuples à accompagner davantage le pays pour tenir ses engagements en faveur des droits de l'homme et relever les défis dans le nouvel environnement que le nouveau coronavirus nous a imposé. Honorable commissaire, chers membres, nous vous remercions et comptons sur les recommandations qui découleront de cette session pour améliorer la situation des droits de l'homme au Cameroun et la réalisation des objectifs de l'agenda 2063 de l'Union africaine ainsi que l'agenda 2030 relative aux objectifs de développement durable. Je vous remercie pour votre aimable attention. Thank you very much uh, for your statement. Uh, we, uh, I would like to express my condolences uh, for the passing away of uh, the chairperson of your commission uh, and wish uh, that um, all of you and the family uh, are condoled. Um, we also uh, appreciate your statement uh, regard, uh, regarding the situation in Cameroon. Uh, which, as you have pointed out, is the source of uh, serious concern uh, and the situation of human rights in Cameroon uh, being a very worrying situation. Uh, and as you pointed out, particularly as it relates to the northwest and southwest uh, regions of Cameroon, uh, the hate speech and the Boko Haram attacks uh, that have uh, created insecurity uh, and violence um, we also take note of and express, uh, join you in expressing a very serious concern about the huge loss of life that you have uh, pointed out, uh, the material damage that uh, these situations have caused, as well as uh, the decline in socioeconomic activities uh, that you have pointed out, particularly in the northwest and southwest of uh, Cameroon. Uh, we also take note of the concern that we have expressed about uh, water supply, uh, particularly in the context of COVID-19, uh, which, as uh, the previous speaker, uh, the CEO of the Kenya National Human Rights Commission pointed out, uh, have witnessed uh, sharp um, the need for water supply has increased during COVID-19, uh, and its commodification have increased uh, the cost of living. Uh, in parts of uh, Africa that are in Kenya. So we very much thank you also the points relating to um, challenge uh, for, of school dropouts as a result of closure of the schools, uh, which is a joint concern for all of us. Thank you once again. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if we are having uh, our system being interfered with or infiltrated by uh, people who are not supposed to be here. Um, Edwell? Yes, uh, we are working on that. We've managed to block the chats. We are just uh, working on how to clear everything, but we're on top of things. All right, so we should proceed. Eh? Yes, we can proceed. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, sincere apologies to um, distinguished participants uh, for, the, for this interference uh, that you might have uh, noticed uh, on the chat platform in particular. Um, I do hope that uh, we will not be uh, any further. May I request if um, 
The representative of Saharawi Arab Democratic Republic is with us now. Okay, we have the representative of the Saharawi Arab Democratic Republic. Uh, we kindly request that uh, you take the floor, uh, put the mic and the video on. Thank you. Okay, uh, may I request the representative of the Sahara Arab Democratic Republic to take the floor? Wadad Mustafa Fadli. Wadad Mustafa Fadli. Kindly take the floor, please. Put put the video are you, on. Uh, are you hearing me? Your video is not on. Uh, are you hearing me now? Please proceed. Are you hearing me Thank now? Thank you. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is an interview of uh, the Sahara Arab Democratic Republic. Uh, Mr. President, commissioners, representatives of uh, countries and government, uh, representative of non-government organization and the association, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first on behalf of this uh, of the Sahara Republic, I would like to thank the Commission Office uh, for their good effort to promote and protect human rights in our continent and for the success of the work of this Commission, especially in this difficult uh, circumstances of COVID-19 pandemic regarding the spread of uh, the COVID-19. I would like to inform you that uh, the government of the Sahara Republic has made commendable effort uh, and effectively deal with the pandemic throughout this uh, huge, huge ones of uh, precedent directive speci specific preventive uh, measure to avoid the spread of the pandemic and the establishment of a national mechanism uh, to follow to follow in uh, addition to forming a committee of experts and specialists at the level of the Ministry of Health. I would like to point out that this this measures has uh, have a result in a clear clear and very remarkable result i am pleased and happy to inform you that sahara republic uh, controlled uh, tourist tourists are free of covid 19 to, uh, till today mr president commissioners uh, my delegation uh, express the concern regarding the fate of Sahrawi uh, political prisoners in Morocco. Prisoners of in Morocco's uh, Moroccan prison and the the, the, the variation the face of the most basic rights, including the right to medical treatment and their exposure to oppression by Moroccan 
authorities. More concern arises from the fact their situation is Morocco authorities. More concern arises from the fact they uh, from the fact that their situation is worsening in light of the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. Where hundreds of cases were recorded in Moroccan prisons, which exposes the persons in prisoners in general and Sahara political detains, detains in particular to the risk of infection by COVID-19 and associated risks. Therefore, this subject was expressed in several letters from the President of Sahrawi Republic to the Secretary, Secretary General of the United Nations and International Organization to pay attention to serious seriousness of this situation. My, as usual, the uh, flagrant uh, violence of international human rights and the humanitarian law that continue to occur every day in the occupied part of the Sahara Republic, which is documented in the reports of several complete and credible international organizations and bodies. For your information, the Sahrawi people in the occupied territory of the Sahrawi Republic suffer from suffer from uh, miserable human rights situation. They are exposed to serious systematic and endless horrendous violation as they face many restriction, restriction imposed on their right, including freedom of expression. Peaceful assembly, associations, and the right to demonstrate the Moroccan authorities have always responded by repressing peaceful protesters with uh, ex exclusive force and brutality that often led to deaths. I would like to seize this opportunity to demand the immediate uh, cessation of such grave violation committed by the Moroccan authorities and security ser service and do all possible effort to realize all Sahrawi political uh, prisoners in Morocco prisons. Level the fate of those missing and lift the restriction imposed by the Moroccan security service on the Sahrawi citizen in the equipped territory and stop massive plunder of Sahrawi wall and the removal of the Moroccan military wall dividing the Western Sahara land and people. We also call open the commission to help protect the Sahrawi people in the equipped territory from the serious COVID-19 pandemic under the uh, uh, neglected policies of the Kingdom of Morocco, which will cause a humanitarian, in addition to the bitter reality already explained by the Sahrawi people under the Morocco occupied administration. Mr. President, Commissioners, I would like to remind you, as usual, of the uh, necessity of implementing the decision of Executive Council of the African Union, uh, 689, to send a mission to the occupied territory of the Sahara Republic to investigate human rights violation and report to AU about it. I would like to confirm this, uh, the sincere, the 
constructive cooperation of the Sahrawi Republic and the police, Polisario Front with the effort of Secretary General of the United Nations and the expressions of read nice to engage explicitly in every effort that world country put to resolving the Sahrawi Moroccan conflict under the uh, suspense of the United Nations through its mission, Minorso. And we hope and look forward that this United Nations mission will play its full role as an international mission, mission charged with organi uh, organizing a referendum to determine the fate of the Sahrawi people and to enjoy complete freedom to move and connective with Sahrawi citizens on both sides of military wall and exercise the task of protecting, monitoring and reporting on human rights. My government has always valued the uh, endeavors and the good steps taken by the African Union at the level of its various disciplinary bodies to contribute resolving the conflict in line with the United Nations. Mr. President, commissioners, on my own name and uh, on behalf of the government and the people of the Sahrawi Republic, I conclude before this distribution gathering by resting our deep and sincere thanks and gratitude to you and all the distinguished members for your great effort in, in the interest of our countries in the uh, framework of promoting and protecting human rights in the continent. In this spirit, we express our permanent leading to work and cooperate with you. Uh, I thank you uh, and I apologize because this uh, interview in Arabic, but I translate before this, uh, this time. Okay, thank you. Are you, are you? Help me? Mr. President, are you hearing me? Etoile, vous m'entendez? Est-ce que Etoile, vous me suivez? J'ai l'impression que j'ai l'impression que la connexion avec Addis Abeba, j'ai l'impression que la connexion avec Addis Abeba est interrompue. Euh, donnons leur Quelques secondes, s'ils vont se reconnecter. S'ils ne se reconnectent pas, nous allons poursuivre avec notre agenda. 
Donnons-leur quelques secondes, mais sinon, en attendant qu'ils puissent se reconnecter, euh, la commission vient de suivre le représentant de la République arabe sahraoui démocratique, euh, M. Wadad Mustafa, qui a commencé par remercier la commission pour l'opportunité que nous leur avons offerte euh, de devoir faire euh, la situation générale de l'État des droits de l'homme sur le continent. Voilà, le président est en ligne. Je vais lui remettre la parole, qu'il puisse continuer. J'étais en train de résumer euh, la communication de M. Ouadad Mustafa en attendant que vous vous reconnectiez. Sinon, vous pouvez prendre la parole et continuer avec euh, la poursuite de l'agenda. Merci. Thank you very much, Vice Chair, uh, for stepping in. Uh, we have been disconnected here on, uh, on our side in Addis. Um, thank you for stepping in. Uh, and also, uh, we appreciate the statement by uh, the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic, um, including uh, uh, the reminder uh, from the representative of Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic Uh, for us to uh, follow up on the Executive Council decision uh, relating to undertaking investigation to the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic. Thank you for that. May I request if the independent medical legal unit, IMLU, the representative of IMLU, Kevin Mwangi, are you there? Okay, thank you. Uh, Kevin, uh, please uh, put the mic on uh, as well as the video and take the floor. Um, honorable chairpersons, Honorable Commissioners, State Delegates, Representatives from National Human Rights Institutions, Members of Civil Society Organization and dis Distinguished Participants, the Independent Medical U Legal Unit is grateful for the opportunity to deliver this statement of the state of human rights during the COVID-19 period in Kenya. With regards to the human rights situation during the COVID-19 period in Kenya, we wish to state as follows. The African Commission on Human and People's Rights released a statement on the 24th of March 2020 asking states to anchor their COVID-19 response to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, more specifically the right to life, which is contained in Article 4, and Article 9 on the right to access to information, and Article 16 on the right to health. As IMLU with an eye specifically on the right to life and Article 5 on the right to Article 5 on prohibition of torture, cruel, inhumane, or degrading punishment and treatment, we embarked on a monitoring, uh, monitoring the human rights situation in Kenya in accordance with the principles established by the African Commission on Human and People's Rights, which include the right principle to legality, non-discrimination, and equality, addressing challenges of non-implementation and compliance, respect for human and people's rights and monitoring investigation corrective measures. Since the declaration of the first COVID-19 COVID case in Kenya, curfew, uh, and the curfew period was uh, subsequently initiated, incidences of corruption, arbitrary arrest, little use of force by police have been reported by individual, state oversight agencies, media, and civil society. In order to ensure that the state protects human rights, IMLU has put in place measures to monitor human rights situation during the COVID-19 period. Between, uh, um, IMLU has between 27th March 2020 and 30th June 2020 recorded 64 cases of torture and other forms of ill treatment and in terms of extra, and extrajudicial killings related to enforcement of curfew orders and social distancing directives. Out of the 64 cases, 23 were deaths and 41 were injuries from police beatings and one from an assistant chief. 
the organization, organization's investigations have established that the officers used weapons, including whips, tear gas, and live bullets to enforce the COVID-19 related government directives. We are concerned that the well-meaning public health provisions are being implemented in a punitive and counterproductive manner to the initial purpose of combating the pandemic. The daily reports of cases of police extortion and corruption and uh, with curfew breakers at a fee and placing persons into quarantine as a punishment for those who refuse to give bribes or question police misconduct. IMLU has further established that the use of force by the police was contrary to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, the UN Declaration of Human Rights, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, the UN Code of Conduct of Police and Law Enf Conduct for Law Enforcement Officials, the Constitution, the National Police Act, and other subsequent national legislation. The National Police Service fails to ensure that its officers use force only when lawful, necessary, and proportionate and accountable. We call upon the, the Commission to urge the Kenyan government to adhere to the Robben Robin Island guidelines by ensuring that those responsible for acts of torture and ill treatment and extrajudicial killings are subjected to legal process, to the legal process and general comment for to the African Commission on Human and People's Rights on the right to redress for victims of torture and other cruel, inhumane and degrading treatment and punishment by ensuring that victims are able to access reparations to preserve the right to life in accordance to Article 4 of the African Commission on Human and People's Rights and General Comment 3 of the African Commission on Human and People's Rights on the right to life by ensuring that effective, impartial, and prompt investigations are acted and the perpetrators subjected to the judicial process. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kevin, for the statement uh, for Independent Medical Legal Unit uh, on uh, the work that uh, the uh, IMLU have undertaken in monitoring and reporting on uh, cases of violations of the right to life under Article 4 of the Charter, uh, cases of uh, torture uh, under Article 5 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, uh, as well as um, cases of extortion. Uh, by uh, police uh, in the course of the enforcement of the uh, curfews uh, and other social distancing measures adopted by uh, the Republic of Kenya. Um, and also we take note of the call for uh, prompt and independent investigation uh, and taking appropriate action for bringing those who perpetrated the violations to justice. Uh, thank you for your statement. We have AIDS and Rights Alliance for Southern Africa. Uh, I don't think that we have uh, this institution, so uh, we proceed to the next one. Uh, reprieve. Do we have reprieve? Okay, uh, if we have reprieve, uh, this is the organization with observer status 514. Uh, the representative of Reprieve, kindly take the floor. It looks like that we're not able to connect with the representative of Reprieve. So may I request may I request the organization REDHAC represented by Maximilian Ngombe. Okay, uh, this is the organization with observer status 424. Uh, I request that the representative take the floor. Put the mic and the video on, please.
Okay, looks like that network connections are failing us. Let's try the next one. Southern Africa Litigation Center. Southern Africa Litigation Center. Southern Africa Litigation Center, represented by Sanele Sibia. Okay. This is the organization with observer status number 420. Mr. Sanele Sibia, kindly take the floor. Please put the mic and the video on. Mr. Sanele Sibia. Okay, all right, um, perhaps uh, may I request that we actually uh, take the flow, um, take a break uh, and come back in, uh, come back at a quarter past the hour. And let's take the break now and come back quarter past the hour. Uh, we we will try. Um, I hope by that time, colleagues will be able to um, join in or have the connections sorted, uh, and then we will uh, finalize the list of uh, statements. So this is the uh, time for the health break. Uh, we'll be back quarter past the hour. Thank you all very much for your kind attention and uh, for your patience as we try to. Uh, run this proceeding as smoothly as possible, uh, despite the uh, connection glitches that we continue to experience. Thank you. <laughs> 